If you've always wondered what shoved down the front of my pants, well, stick around. Welcome back to OG's Danger Show. <laughs> Welcome back, Original Gangsters. Officer Greg out here with you. On the last video, when I talked about the next belt, uh, gun belt, concealed carry belt, it brought up a lot of questions from some viewers about how I carry appendix inside the waistband, or what we call AIWB. Appendix inside the waistband is when a holster is mounted up here in the front at the 12 o'clock mark. Actually, I want to set it off just a little bit to the side for comfort. We'll get into that in just a second. Now, before we even get into this, a lot of people are going to immediately poo-poo this method of carry and say, oh gee, that's dangerous. You've always got a firearm pointed right at your Richard. And uh, one of the rules of firearm safety is never point your muzzle at anything you're not willing to destroy. Well, folks, I'm not willing to destroy what's down below. However, let me tell you a couple of reasons why appendix inside the waistband is actually very safe if done properly. Now, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that when your firearm, in whatever condition it is, is mounted inside of an appendix inside the waistband holster, or any holster for that matter, the thing is what we'll call safe. The trigger has been completely protected by a piece of hard kydex in this case. Uh, we don't want any soft holsters. I like these nice hard kydex holsters. Anything that protects the trigger guard uh, and, and keeps that trigger from being pulled essentially renders this entire package here as a unit of safety, right? I do know that this firearm is not going to go off if I drop it, if I push on it, if I take an ink pen and try and dig at that trigger, nothing's going to set this off. So this is a rather safe setup as packaged like this. I do know that this Glock 19 mounted in this tier one concealed holster with a spare magazine can be mounted onto my belt with complete safety. We don't have to take very long to imagine which body part a pistol is pointed at if it's mounted up here in the 12 o'clock position. Say, happy nest. Happy penis. No, happy nest. Happy penis. However, I will counter with this. First of all, the muzzle of this pistol is pointed actually down past any parts that might be uh, in question here and more or less into the ground. Typical belt holsters, if mounted out here on the side of your belt, like any old police officer or the traditional method to carry here at the three o'clock or four o'clock method are still pointed at your body parts. Anytime you take any kind of a wide stance, your feet are set apart like this, like when you're in a fight or when you're stepping down from a vehicle or just walking, climbing stairs. Anytime your feet are, are not straight up and down, your thigh is essentially pointed across that muzzle. My thigh is stretched out here. The muzzle of my pistol is pointed straight down at my thigh. And those of you who are concerned about that femoral artery, well, it's still right there in front of that uh, muzzle. We need to get that concern out of there first. Three o'clock carry over here on the belt is great, and I do it a lot. However, it's not as easy to conceal a pistol, and it is in no way safer than appendix inside the waistband. Now, you may disagree with me on this, and I don't really care. I'm here to show you, if you are interested in appendix inside the waistband, just how safe it can be done and all of its benefits and even some of the uh, some of the drawbacks to appendix inside the waistband, although there are a few. Those of us who are a little wider in stature don't need a large pistol underneath our cover garments over here mounted to a belt. For simulation purposes, this is mounted to my belt. All it does is take my already wide frame and make me wider. And if I add a magazine pouch over here, because I always carry a spare magazine, I get even wider. Pretty soon I'm gonna be bumping doorways walking through them, like Kim Kardashian's butt. Appendix inside the waistband carry is up front here. Now, in a fight, normal, everyday, walking around, standing around, our hands tend to relax right here in front of us. For the most part, we're holding a cell phone, we're holding our wallet, we're pushing a shopping cart, uh, we're gesturing with our hands while talking to people like this, and our hands kind of are oriented in front of us. So, appendix inside the waistband actually places that pistol right here, ready to be drawn with a lifting of the garment and pulling out that pistol. If I have a pistol mounted over here at the three o'clock, it requires quite a bit of shoulder movement to swing that arm back and get my master grip on that pistol. If I'm seated in any uh, modern vehicle seat, a bucket style seat, it's tough to get that elbow back there it's going to jam into that seat while I'm trying to go for my pistol. I actually have to work in kind of a lean 
to get that pistol off of a three o'clock position. It's even worse for a four o'clock position back here uh, behind my kidney. So appendix inside the waistband keeps everything nice and close up front, ready to go. It's also a fact of nature that when we get into a fight, our hands come up in front of us to protect us and also to fight. It's like a punching motion. Well, if my hands are right here, this is in police work what we call a position of advantage. My weak foot is a little bit forward of my strong foot. My hands are up here where I can protect myself. If I'm writing a ticket, if I'm interviewing someone and I have a notepad, if I'm looking at a phone or holding a radio, my hands always remain right here where I can protect myself, but also I can reach around and grab any of the weapons that are on my duty belt. It is no different for the average Joe carrying a firearm. His hands ought to remain up here at the position of advantage. If need be, all it takes then is to reach down, clear that garment in a nice firm manner, and get a master grip on that pistol and come right in to the firing position. This weapon is cleared, by the way, empty all the way around, just for demonstration purposes. So I like appendix inside the waistband because, because it keeps everything up here in front where my hands naturally are falling anyway. Here's another reason. All day long, as I move around, as I get out of my vehicle, as I go into a store and shop for things and reach up and grab things off of a shelf or bend down and grab things, I gotta be worried about a garment coming up and getting snagged on that or showing some kind of a lump. Appendix inside the waistband rides nice and close up front here. You can see as I turn to the side, it does not produce any extra bulges. Still, I don't have the uh, rippled abs of a Hollywood movie star. So even with a little bit of tactical girth up, up front, I am able to very easily uh, mount this holster right here and carry it very comfortably in front of me all day long. And of course, drawing from the appendix carry is super fast. If I have the use of both hands, I wanna reach down with my off hand, clear my garments in a nice, firm, positive manner, get my master grip onto that pistol, first time only, because this is all the chance you're gonna get is that one master grip. I'm gonna come out, I'm already in line here. I'm just gonna rotate my pistol and from here I can fight all the way from this position straight out into my final firing position. So I'm climbing out of the truck and I wanna make sure that my garments are nice and pulled down over my concealed firearm before I head inside of uh, Walmart. Uh, always carry if you're going inside of a Walmart, folks. COVID's the least dangerous thing they got in there. Very easy for me to just to stand around like this in line and uh, be looking around the room and just make sure that I'm tucked and pulled down over my pistol. So for me, the key to a good appendix inside the waistband holster is the fact that it spreads the load out across the front of my belt line. It's not just a pistol in just a holster in one little, uh, in one little piece up here that can rock back and forth. I like these tier one concealed holsters because it spreads out the pistol and the attached magazine into a wide piece that snaps in on two different locations, two different clips here, and spreads that load out and actually keeps it very stable side to side. There is no wobbling, there's no tilting. This is not gonna rotate and tilt left or right during the day. It stays nice and firm right there and actually helps hold in some of my own goo. Anyone who's too concerned with the muzzle of their pistol pointing right at their own junk, you gotta know that if done properly, this muzzle of my pistol is not actually pointed there. This holster might look like it's dead center on my belt, but actually it's, the pistol part of it is a little bit off to the right. If this was a clock, it'd be like 12, 10 p.m. This muzzle of this pistol is right over here to the right. Let's, uh, I'm gonna pull this holster out and I'll mount it on the outside of the holster to show you what's going on inside my pants. I'll mount this one here just into the next belt, but outside of my trousers. So that's my most comfortable spot right there. You can see that the muzzle of the pistol, if I was able to draw a straight line down, is actually just to the right of any important parts. It sits in that natural crease. If I sit down in a chair in a restaurant or in a car, my leg is moving up alongside this holster and not directly into it. It's also not jabbing the muzzle of that right into my junk. It's over here a little bit into that crease, so that's nice. Now, were I to have a negligent discharge? Yeah, that would absolutely suck but the round would more than likely burn some skin and pass right on cross and not damage anything important. We mentioned the benefits of having your hands up front when you're in a fight. Well, one of the cool things about an appendix inside the waistband carry is that my pistol's right here. We already know that, but when I need to go for a magazine, boy, it's right down here at the exact same spot. I come up into my workspace with an empty pistol. I reach down here. I've already got a properly indexed spare magazine, slam it home, and I'm right back in the fight. This rig is the tier one concealed. I believe it's called the Aegis. 
Uh, this is one of my favorite holsters. This actually happens to be the gun I carry most often. Now, one of the issues I hear a lot about with appendix inside the waistband carry is the reholstering. And I will grant you that reholstering any pistol, doesn't matter which holster position you wear a holster in, reholstering a pistol is the most dangerous part of drawing and shooting and reholstering a pistol. Reholstering is where we see most of our accidents on a police range, on a civilian range. It doesn't matter. When coming back into the holster, uh, people are forgetting, they're busy looking down range at their awesome groups, and they've got a, a finger on the trigger or some other thing gets caught in there, and as they go to holster the pistol, they feel a little resistance, but they're not paying attention, so they just keep on pushing it down, and boom! Pistol does what the pistol is supposed to do, and something's caught against that trigger, and as they push it forward, the thing just discharges, and usually one of our uh, body parts is in the way. So I'm going to show you a little technique here for reholstering appendix inside the waistband that keeps this muzzle from pointing at any of our parts as you're going back into the holster. I teach concealed carry uh, classes here in uh, California and yes we issue hundreds of thousands of concealed carry permits in California folks. Don't let the uh, internet rumors that nobody can get a permit in California, don't let those rumors stand. I have students come to my class wearing inside the waistband holsters that are floppy. They're no more than a sock, you know, those little Uncle Mike's padded things. Uh, they've got those tucked inside the waistband. Well, when they draw their firearm out and they present it to target, that little floppy sock holster collapses. If that does not have some kind of a reinforced band around it, that little floppy holster collapses with the pressure of your belt pushing it up, up against your body. Okay, that's fine once you've come out of the holster. Now, we have a problem. We need to get back into the holster for some reason. We've got a loved one that we need to get out of the way. We've got to pick up someone. We've got to open a door, climb a ladder, uh, open a door for police. We need to reholster so that we're not holding a gun when police arrive at our shooting scene. Very important to be able to reholster a firearm without pulling the holster out of your belt, inserting the, the pistol into it, and then sticking it back in your belt. Here's how you do it with appendix inside the waistband. So I've got an unloaded pistol here. I've got my holster mounted outside my belt just to show you guys where everything is pointed. I'm going to reinsert this pistol inside of this appendix inside the waistband holster by first taking a step back with my strong leg only. That tilts the uh, holster a little bit sideways to my center line. Then I'm going to lean back just a little bit as I, it doesn't have to be crazy, we're not doing the limbo here, but I'm going to lean back just a couple of degrees. And now as I reinsert this pistol, keeping my hand clear of the muzzle, as I reinsert this pistol into the holster, the muzzle is actually pointed out here at the dirt in front of me. If I was to catch that on a piece of t-shirt or one of those little stretchy uh, cords that, that cinches up a hoodie, if I was to somehow have an accidental discharge, that round is going in the dirt out in front of me because I've moved my right foot to the back and I've tilted myself forward like this. And what that's done is actually taken that holster, mounted against my body, and as I lean back, that holster is actually leaning with me, and now as I reinsert the pistol into the holster, it's pointed out at the dirt in front of me instead of straight down at my own gooey bits. So a few years ago, I stumbled across the Tier 1 Concealed brand of appendix inside the waistband holsters. It is a, well, what's often called a sidecar holster because it carries a magazine up front along with a pistol. Again, that's where I want all my gear. I want to be able to reach down here and grab my gun out and also grab a spare magazine in the same spot with my hands here on my center line. Well, this holster manages to mount everything up front, snaps over my belt with these nice heavy, heavy duty, very flexible uh, clips. These things are nice and deep. They let this holster sit nice and deep below my belt. I've ordered a couple of holsters from a couple of companies uh, that are just like this, that were a little cheaper. I thought, hey, I'm gonna save a couple bucks. Turns out it was garbage. They hold the holster up high above your belt line. Now everything flops around all day long. All this weight is above your belt line. And especially if you have a little tactical cushion there, it's gonna push, out, push the, the uh, grip of your pistol outward all day long. And next thing you know, these little points here are bulging out from underneath your t-shirt. And the whole thing feels wobbly like it's just gonna fall out and land on the ground. Tier one concealed because of where they mount their little clips here, sits the holster nice and deep in, underneath your belt and uh, nice and low in there. You actually can run the muzzle right, right down here between your junk and your thigh and uh, makes for a very nice stable carry that does not rock back and forth. This, this holster does not wiggle and rock back and forth. It's not loose and floppy. The one thing about a single 
pistol holster that goes inside the waistband is if it's just got that one little clip on it, this thing can rock all day long like this, but by having these two points spread completely across this holster, it actually keeps it nice and firm and stable and does not allow it to rock. So that's a pretty cool little design. Now one of the keys to these tier one concealed holsters is the fact that the spare magazine is mounted over here on the side of their holsters. They have a lot of different methods for mounting these. You can see that this holster actually is segmented, articulated for a reason. There is a company out there, a dinosaur themed company, that makes a sidecar holster a lot like this, but it is rigid. It's a rigid bent piece of plastic. It's a pretty good rig, but I believe this articulated piece here is important. It moves with you. I can slide it over here a little bit to the right of my center line and the thing will flex with me. I can bend down and the pieces flex apart from each other. They're not one rigid chunk of plastic. So I like that. This one happens to be mounted together with a little strip of what looks to be leather here with uh, some rivets holding it together. A key to all of the tier one concealed holsters is this what we call a raven's claw over here. I think they call it a raven's claw. Boy, it sounds pretty cool. If they don't call it a raven's claw, they ought to. Anyway, this little claw piece right here, it looks it, like a strange design. Like, why would I have that inside my pants? That seems counterintuitive. Well, as this thing goes over your belt line, as this snaps over your belt, this claw actually uh, pushes up against the inside of my pants and shoves the grip of the pistol back into my body by riding against the inside of my pants. Here is a tier one concealed. This is probably my newest purchase from them. This is for my shield nine millimeter that happens to have a crimson trace light and laser combo on it. This one happens to have a piece of very flexible but very tough rubber or plastic in there instead of that strip of leather. And this one is put together with snaps. So if you wanted to, you could unsnap the holster from this magazine pouch. I don't know why you would want to do that because again, it, I think it gives you a, a holster that rocks back and forth. So a problem with some of these appendix inside the waistband holster companies is they don't typically make holsters for big guns because most people don't conceal big guns. There's such a huge variety of small concealable high capacity firearms out there that why would you ever carry a big gun in here? Well, let me tell you, carrying a big gun appendix inside the waistband is actually more comfortable, not less comfortable than carrying a small compact. A small pistol when mounted inside your belt has the ability, a lot of its weight is still up high. There's no fulcrum down below. There's no muzzle or barrel hanging down below. So this thing actually can, can wiggle out from your body a little bit throughout the day. It takes a little bit of adjusting and it still rides very comfortably. But if I have a long nose pistol and I mount it in the same kind of holster, I now have a piece of the firearm hanging down below and a lot of its weight distributed down below the holster, lower in my waistband. So not as much wiggle up here, not as much of the weight is above the, the belt line, a lot of it's hanging down below, sort of like a keel on a boat or, a, or an anchor. And I've actually taken a holster here that was made for my m and 45. It happens to fit, it's an inside the waistband holster. It happens to fit this M&P9 perfectly. Covers the trigger, that's the most important part. Locks into the trigger guard. It has some type of a raven's claw thing out here too. This one's made by On Your Six Designs. Now. This is the next best thing to have in an appendix inside the waistband from Tier 1 Concealed. This is a single pistol, obviously there's no magazine pouch with this. So this piece, I would have to mount this pistol by itself, a little over here to the right of center. I can carry that big old gun down here and uh, boy, it's like, it's like I'm wearing nothing which is something you don't want to see. So because the On Your Six Designs holster does not have a companion magazine pouch, I ordered up this little doodad. This is a nice little uh, piece that keeps a spare magazine. You can see that it's curved there. It keeps a spare magazine mounted for you in the exact same place that a, an appendix inside the waistband would carry it. Also gives me the benefit of having a little uh, K-Bar TDI knife in here, which is I carry one of these on duty at the exact same location. And off duty, one of the handiest knives you'll ever have. So now with the addition of a second piece here, I'm able to keep not only my defensive knife, but also a spare magazine mounted in the exact same place as if I had one unified holster system. So to reholster, I kick my right leg back. I lean back just a little bit at the waist. Reholstering should always be an administrative project, folks. You should never be fast back into the holster. 
I want to take the muzzle of that pistol and I want to very slowly, very carefully, keeping my fingers out of the way of the muzzle, I want to look down with my eyes, clear that any of my goo and my garments are out of the way, and then I want to very slowly rotate the muzzle of that pistol right back into that holster and into place. Never once was this muzzle pointed at any of my parts. It's pointed out here at the dirt in front of me in case I had an accidental discharge. I didn't figure most of you would want to see a 50 Shades of Greg intro. Just know that this is a really good piece of kit. This is the only holster I buy anymore. I've tried two other brands of appendix inside the waistband holsters like this that carry a magazine. They didn't work. They had loose little floppy clips up here that were not uh, substantial enough and the pistol would lean out and flop around like this out in front of me all day long. Always felt like it was going to pop out of my waistband and land on the ground. So. What's that? You wanted to see Fifty Shades of Greg? All right, here it is. Mm. Oh yeah, sounds good. Okay, my last video about the next bell, I have a couple people ask me, oh gee, could you give us some tips on driving or sitting with an in appendix inside the waistband holster for long periods of time? Now, during the daytime, I wear uh, a duty belt, so my pistol is mounted at the 3 o'clock position, banging up against a seat belt that's owned by somebody else. However, off-duty, about 95% of the time, I wear appendix inside the waistband uh, carry. So when you're sitting in a vehicle, it kind of pushes everything from your thighs up into your abdomen and makes things and can make things a little more uncomfortable. So here's a couple of tips for those of you who want to carry appendix inside the waistband but don't want to pull a holster on and off all day long getting in and out for every one of your stops on your errands. First of all, you can loosen up your, whole, your belt a little bit and that's why I like this next belt. I can reach down here, I can push one button and I can just push out with my, my belly and I've all automatically just given myself another inch or two of, uh, of belt space in here. Makes this a little bit looser and keeps it from jabbing into my, uh, into my gut. Even though I'm seated, the muzzle of my pistol right now is pointed between my parts and my thigh right down at the seat. Another concern with sitting inside of a vehicle is that you're gonna have your seat belt on, hopefully. Well, oh gee, that goes right across my concealed firearm here in appendix inside the waistband. Yes, it does. What I wanna do is just lower that seat belt, look nice and low on my pelvis, which is kinda of where it should be anyway to keep you from flying out your windshield. And again, rotate the butt of my pistol out. I can now still grab my pistol at any time right here should I need to, in a carjacking or any other situation. If my garment's covering me like this and I'm driving around all day and I'm nice and comfortable, but it's time to get out at a truck stop or something to uh, go get something to eat or, or I'm running in to use the restroom, all I have to do is jump out, give my next belt a couple little presses, and you can hear those little clicks. I've now tightened it down nice and tight up against my body and I'm ready to run into the store. So I appreciate you guys joining me out here talking about appendix inside the waistband carry. Agree with me or don't, I don't really care. This is not, not for everyone, and if it's not for you, don't do it. Put in a Taylor Swift CD, I'm sure you'll be happy. If you have not already done so, hit the thumbs up button down here, give this video a like. That helps it get spun around to more people on YouTube and helps get the word out there. I'm not concerned about growing my channel and being the most popular gun-related uh, channel on YouTube. I am concerned about getting good information out to the most people. There's a lot of new gun owners out there and a lot of new people carrying firearms to protect themselves and their families. I'd like to give them good, safe information about how to do that better. Coming from a guy who's carried a pistol on and off duty for about 25, 30 years now. YouTube is kind of famous for demonetizing any videos that show firearms or firearm parts. I've had pretty good luck so far. I'm not gonna try and job you like some YouTube creators and tell you, oh poor me, YouTube is taking away all my money. That being said, there's a very good chance that some of my videos are gonna get demonetized even after they've been monetized for a while. That has happened to a couple of other YouTube creator friends of mine. Um, silly rules, whatever. We're not gonna, trying to play their game is, is pointless. What I've done instead, I've also started up a Patreon. If you're so inclined, I would appreciate your support over on Patreon. You can find me under OG's Danger Show. Until next time, I ask that you stay armed if you are legally allowed to do so. Be safe out there. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Until next video, OG out.